This screencast is to demonstrate running a transfer of digital objects through Archivematica 0.9 all the way through ingest to access and archival storage. So right now you'll see that I just signed in to the Archivematica web-based dashboard and I'm configuring my source directory. You can find instructions to do this in the administrator's manual and you can add more than one. I'm just going to add one for now and then I'm going to go back to the transfer tab. Here, I can browse in that directory that I've just added as a source to the set of digital objects that I'm going to call my transfer. When I click Add, you'll see that it shows up here in the dashboard. I'm selecting standard transfer type, but you'll see there are four others there. Those transfer types will be demonstrated in future screencasts. And I'm going to name my transfer and hit Start Transfer. So it disappears from the top, and what's happening is it's beginning a set of transfer microservices. The bell icon appears, and that lets us know that it's time to make a decision. Here we'll just approve, but we can also re reject the transfer if we'd like for any reason. Now Archivematica is sending the transfer through more microservices in the transfer tab. If you click in the gray area behind any of these microservices, you'll see a list of all the jobs associated with that microservice. So for instance, you'll see that we are renaming with a UUID for the transfer, we're assigning file UUIDs and checksums, we're verifying transfer checksums, generating the METS XML, which constitutes the original order of the transfer. We have an option to quarantine, we're extracting any packages, we're scanning for viruses, sanitizing the file names, so this means if there's anything like an ampersand, we're changing that. And then, of course, we're characterizing and extracting metadata. This is using FITS, and currently this takes the longest out of our transfer microservices. I'll show you here that if you click on the cog at any of these jobs, you can actually see the list of tasks that's associated. So this is a very detailed list, and it's handy for error reporting. And click on close and that will close that. So characterize and extract metadata has completed. If you expand complete transfer microservice, you'll see that the transfer context have contents have been indexed. This is for 1.0 so that we can search our transfer backlog with full content and metadata indexing. You'll see the bell icon, and that's because Archivematica is ready for us to create our SIPs. Using the drop-down menu, I can reject here, or I can create a single SIP and continue processing, which is what I'll select right now. So our transfer is being packaged into a SIP and being sent to the ingest tab to go through the set of ingest microservices. Immediately, we have a choice to make about normalization, but before we do that, I'd like to show you how to add metadata and rights information to your SIP. This must be done before normalization in Archivematica 0.9. So if you click on the metadata template icon, you'll see here that we can list the metadata that's already associated, which at this point is none, or we can add metadata. When I click on add, I'm just going to add a title here. I'm just going to call it images again. You can add other, me other metadata here. It's basic Dublin core. And then once you're finished, you can click create. And if you need to change that, you can hit edit or delete here. And this, of course, would have a list. And then if we go back to that main page that the metadata template icon took us to, we can also add rights. So these are based on premise rights. Our bases are copyright, statute, license, donor, policy, and other. I won't add any right now, but I just wanted to scroll through and show you that this is a two-page process. This is the first page that describes the basis and documentation, and then the second page allows you to, to define multiple acts and grants and restrictions. And then when you're done, you hit done, and that'll take you back to a page that will list all of the rights and restrictions that you've listed for the SIP. So we're ready to normalize. We can reject the SIP at this point. We can normalize for preservation and access, just for access. We can normalize service files for access. We can choose not to normalize at all or normalize for just preservation. So right now we're going to choose normal normalize for preservation and access. And then our normalization processing begins.
So normalization has completed, and now we're given a choice to approve this normalization. First, we can review the contents of our normalized folder. And it opens in a, another tab if you click on review. And if your browser has the plugins, we can actually view these by double clicking on them in the browser tab. And if the browser doesn't have the appropriate plugin, then it downloads when you double click on something. So let's go back to the ingest tab. Um, we'll assume everything was okay there. We can also look at the report, um, which is sort of a quicker way to see if all of the preservation normalization was attempted, whether it failed or not, whether it was already in a preservation format, and then the same for access, whether it was attempted, whether it failed, and whether it was already in an access format, and therefore didn't need to be normalized. Once you've checked this out, you can click close, and using our drop-down menu, we're going to approve this normalization. So now it's preparing for uploading our APE to archival storage and uploading our DIT to our access system. And I'll just expand these microservices so you can see the jobs that are occurring. So uploading dip is ready. We're going to select to upload the dip to Atom, although we could also upload it to content DM. So we've already created our description in ICA Atom, and the same is true for content DM. You must have your description ready. I'm going to click create intermediate level of description and click upload. And you'll see that our ape is also ready to store. We can review that here in the same way we reviewed the dip before. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to, I could reject the ape as well if I review it and I see something wrong. Um, or we can just choose to store the ape. And then Archivematica asks us to select the ape location for storage. This can be multiple locations. And in the Archivematica demo today, we're going to just store it in a standard Archivematica directory that we've, we've assigned as part of this package. And you'll see that upload dip completed successfully. So if we go to the access tab, we'll see our ape and then the URL of the dip associated with it. If we click on that URL, it'll take us to Atom, where we can log in using password demo at example.com sorry email demo of example.com password demo and you'll see there is the dip that we just uploaded to the access system here in ICA Atom you can you can continue editing adding more metadata and information to this and you can scroll through over here and see what you've added <coughs> We go back to archival storage. You'll see this is our ape that we've uploaded to archival storage. It's been indexed. It has 10 files in it. This would show all of our apes if we had more than one here. We could search it. Um, I'm just going to search images and I'll just show you what the search results look like. You can click here to download the ape or you can click here to view the raw ape in another browser tab. That's all for now. I hope you enjoy testing Archivematica 0.9.